In this tutorial, we're going to learn about compound growth and decay and all the types of questions you might come across at GCSE level. Let's start off by looking at the definition of compound interest. Compound interest is a type of growth where interest is made over time by taking a percentage of the previous amount and not necessarily the original amount. Let's have a look at an example. Sam invests £4,000 in the bank for three years to a bank that pays 10% per year compound interest. Calculate the amount Sam has in the bank after three years. In the previous tutorial, where we looked at simple interest, we used a special financial term for the original amount invested called principal. But for compound growth and decay questions, well, they don't always involve money. So for consistency, we'll call this the original amount. And in this case, it was the £4,000 that Sam invested in the bank. We're given that the interest rate per year is 10%. And this is a compound interest question. So a way we can solve this is by using a process called repeated percentages. We can calculate the interest made after one year by taking 10% of the original amount, which was £4,000, which is equal to £400. And so to calculate the amount that was in Sam's account after one year, what we need to do is add this interest to the amount in her account at the time. And therefore, the new amount after one year is equal to £4,000 plus the interest, which is £400. And this is equal to £4,400. To work out the interest made after year two, because this is compound interest, we need to take 10% of £4,400, which was the amount in her account at the time. This is different from simple interest, where we would have again taken 10% of the original amount. So 10% of £4,400, you can work this out without a calculator by dividing this part by 10, and it's equal to £440. And so to find the new amount after year two, we need to add £4,400, which is the amount in her account at the time, to the interest made after year two, which is £440, which is equal to £4,840. To work out the interest made after year three, we take 10% of this value, £4,840, which is equal to £484. And to work out the new amount in her account, we need to add this interest to the amount that's in her account at the time. And therefore, the amount that Sam has in her bank after three years is equal to 4840 plus 484. You can try to do this calculation in your head or use column addition and you'll find that the answer is equal to 5,324 pounds, okay? Now for non-calculator questions, this method would be the way to do it. But if you have a calculator, there's of course a much quicker way to do this. So let's have a think about what we've just done. By taking 10% of each amount and then adding this to the current amount at the time, well, this is the same as increasing by 10%. So instead, we can use multipliers, which is a much quicker way to increase an amount by a percentage. So using multipliers, we get that the new amount after year three is equal to £4,000, which was the original value, multiplied by 1.1, which is the multiplier equivalent to a 10% increase. And this value would be the new amount in Sam's account after year one. In order to calculate the amount in her account after year two, well, we'd need to increase this amount by 10% by multiplying it by 1.1. And so finally, to work out the new amount after year three, you guessed it, we need to multiply this whole value by another 1.1. And this is the same as 4,000 multiplied by 1.1 to the power of three. And if you work this out in your calculator, you would get the same answer of 5,324 pounds. So by multiplying the original amount by the multiplier raised to a power, which was equal to the number of years, we were able to solve this problem in just a single calculation. And so you can use this general formula to solve compound growth and decay questions. The new amount is equal to the original amount times by the multiplier raised to the power of n, where n is the number of periods. And be careful because n, the number of periods, is not always necessarily going to be equal to the number of years as it was in this example. And we'll see this later on in the tutorial. Let's compare the compound interest Sam made after each year 
with the interest you would have made if the bank paid simple interest at the same rate of 10% per year. As mentioned earlier, after each of the three years, Sam's simple interest would have been 10% of £4,000, which is equal to £400. Now, comparing this with the compound interest, after the first year, we saw that the compound interest was £400, which is the same as a simple interest after the first year. But after the second year, the compound interest was £440, which is £40 more than the simple interest. And after the third year, the compound interest was £484, which is £84 more than the simple interest. And over time, this difference gets larger and larger because compound interest increases exponentially, which is a word that you will learn in A-level. In other words, it starts to really, really ramp up over time. So if you had the choice of where to invest your money between two banks that offer the same interest rate, you definitely want to go with the one that's offering compound interest as opposed to simple interest. We're now going to use what we've learned to solve some typical compound growth and decay questions. In the first question, we're told that Yasmin invests £1,500 for 12 years at 2% per annum compound interest. Calculate how much Yasmin has at the end of the 12 years. We can work out the amount that Yasmin has after 12 years by using this formula, where the new amount after 12 years would be equal to the original amount invested, which was £1,500, times by the multiplier, which is 1.02, the equivalent of an increase of 2%, raised to the power of n, which is 12 in this case, the number of years. And if we work this out in our calculator, we get that the new amount after 12 years is equal to 1,902 pounds and 36 pence. Now, when doing calculations with money, if you do get a decimal value, you need to make sure that you round to the nearest penny, or in other words, round to two decimal places, okay? Let's have a look at the next question. A car was bought for £23,400. Its value depreciated by 12.5% each year for the first three years. What was its value at the end of the three years? Now this question is different to what we've seen in previous questions for a couple of reasons. One of the reasons is because this is the first question where we're not working with interest. Instead, we're told that the value of the car is depreciating which means that over time, the value goes down. There's also no mention of the word compound. And this is where you have to read carefully between the lines. And you'll be expected to know that the value of any car is how much it's worth today and not what it was worth when it was bought. So where the question says its value depreciates by 12.5% each year, well, this means that each year its value decreases by 12.5% of its value at the time. Okay, so this is a typical compound decay question, but we can still solve it using this formula. So using the formula, we get that the car value after three years is equal to the original amount, which in this case is 23,400 pounds, multiplied by the multiplier. Now, because this is a percentage decrease by 12.5%, it means that the multiplier used for this decrease would be 0 0.875 raised to the power of n, which in this case would be three years. And if we work this out in our calculator, we get that the car value after three years is equal to 15,676 pounds and 17 pence to the nearest penny. Okay. Okay, let's have a look at the next question. James bought a watch for 500 pounds. In each year, the value of the watch increases by 13% of its value at the start of that year. After how many complete years will the value of the piano be at least £1,000? So in this question, we've been told the price that James buys the watch. And we're also told how the value of the watch increases every year. As we're told that in each year, the value of the watch increases by 13% of its value at the start of that year. And from this sentence, you should be able to see that this is a compound growth question. And so we can use this formula to try to solve this problem. Now we know what the original amount is. We know that it's 500 pounds. We can also work out the multiplier as we're told that the value of the watch increases by 13%. Now to solve this problem, what we need to do is find the first value of N 
such that when we sub it into this equation, we get a watch value that's at least 1,000 pounds. And we can do this question by trial and error. So let's start off by seeing what the value of the watch is when n is equal to four. So when n is equal to four, we get that the watch value is equal to 500 pounds, which is the original amount, multiplied by 1.13, the equivalent multiplier of a 13% increase to the power of four. Working this out in your calculator, we get that the watch value after four years is equal to 815 pounds and 24 pence to the nearest penny. And since this is less than a thousand pounds, let's try a higher value of N when N is equal to five. So when N is equal to five, we get that the watch value is equal to 500 times 1.13 to the power of five, which is equal to 921 pounds and 22 pence to the nearest penny. And as you can see, this is still less than a thousand pounds. So let's try for the next value up when N is equal to six. We get that the watch value is equal to 500 times by 1.13 to the power of six. And when you work this out in your calculator, we get that the watch value after six years is equal to 1,040 pounds and 98 pence to the nearest penny. And since this is the first value of N where the watch value is greater than 1,000 pounds, or at least a thousand pounds, we can conclude that the number of complete years for the watch to be at least 1,000 pounds is six. Let's have a look at a few more types of compound growth and decay questions. Here we're told that a car was bought for 12,000 pounds. It loses 16% of its value in the first year and 24% of its value every year after. How much would the car be worth after three years? So note that this is a compound decay question because the value of the car is depreciating. But in the first year, the value of the car decreases by 16%. And in the years after, the value of the car decreases by 24%. So this is a typical question where you'll be required to use more than one multiplier to find the new amount. So how we can use the formula to reflect this is by saying that the value of the car after three years is equal to 12,000 pounds times by 0 0.84, which is the multiplier equivalent to a 16% decrease. This would give us the value of the car after the first year. And in order to find the value of the car after the next two years, we need to multiply this value by the equivalent multiplier of a 24% decrease, which is 0 0.76. But we need to do this twice. Or in other words, we need to multiply it by 0 0.76 squared, okay? Working this out in the calculator, we get that the value of the car after three years is equal to 5,822 pounds and 21 pence to the nearest penny. Okay, so let's have a look at the next question. An amount of money was invested for six years at 2.5% per year compound interest. At the end of the six years, the amount was 753 pounds and 80 pence to the nearest penny. How much money was invested at the start? So in this question, we've been given the value of the investment after six years, which is 753 pounds, 80 pence to the nearest penny. We've also been given the compound interest rate per year, which is 2.5%. And so we can substitute these values into this formula to work out how much money was invested at the start. In other words, the original amount. So subbing the values into the formula, we get that 753.80 is equal to the original amount times by 1.025, the equivalent multiplier for a 2.5% increase, raised to the power of six, which was the number of years. And we need to rearrange this equation to find the original amount. So working out this part, we get that 753 0.80 is equal to the original amount times by 1.159 and I'm just going to write dot 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 here as you want to always avoid rounding before you get to the answer. Rearranging this equation we get that the original amount is equal to 753.80 divided by 1.159 dot 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 and evaluating this we get that the money invested at the start is equal to 650 pounds to the nearest penny. Okay, so this is a typical algebra question where you'll be required to rearrange the formula in order to solve the problem. Okay, last question. A full water bottle has been pierced. It will lose 3% of its water every hour. What overall percentage 
has the amount of water decreased after five hours? First of all, let's notice that we've been asked to calculate the percentage decrease between the amount of water when the bottle was full, which we can call the original amount, and the amount of water after five hours, which we can call the new amount. Now the problem is that we don't know the original amount. And so we can't use the formula to find the new amount without having a value for the original amount. But because we're looking at a percentage change, we could actually choose any value as our original amount and we would get the same percentage decrease. So the value I'm going to choose as our original amount is 100 milliliters. And as long as it's appropriate, it really doesn't matter which units you choose since we're trying to find a percentage change. Now we've chosen this value 100 because it's just the easiest to work out a percentage change. For example, if something starts at 100 and goes down to 75, by just taking the difference, you can easily calculate that the percentage decrease would be 25%. So we can now use a formula to work out that the water left after five hours is equal to 100, which is the original amount that we chose, times by 0 0.97, the multiplier equivalent to a 3% decrease, raised to the power of five, which was the number of hours. And do note that the number of periods in this case was in hours, okay, and not years. Working this out in our calculator, we get that the water left after five hours is equal to 85.87 dot 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 milliliters. And so in order to calculate the percentage decrease, we need to subtract this value, the new amount from the original amount, 100 milliliters, giving us that the percentage decrease after five hours is equal to 14.13% to two decimal places, okay? If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up, leave your comments down below and subscribe to this channel so you'll be the first to know when we release our next videos.